Hi, it's Lee, and welcome to The Tesla Economist. Tesla will get bigger than we think, at least in some areas, and possibly not as big as we hope in other areas. Tesla is in the tech industry, and thus able to take advantage of any advances in technology. It's almost always going to be a benefit to Tesla. Well, not just Tesla, but all tech companies. Technology moves fast and has breakthroughs and step changes that not just put wind in these companies' sails, but build even bigger sales to make them go further. Opportunities are continually coming up for these tech companies, the next bubble perhaps. However, they don't always jump on every opportunity that comes up as much as they should. Let's take Microsoft, for example, a juggernaut technology company. They sold the IBM compatible operating system. It was at the time far from the best operating system available, but it meant that there was universal software and files. Economies of scale for software developers having to only make software for one system, which is why it beat Apple, as there was so much more software available. Microsoft sold other software, of course, like Word, Excel, and the rest of the Office suite. But then along came the internet. Microsoft wanted to jump on that bandwagon of the World Wide Web. Netscape had created a browser with a great new interface to browse the web, and Microsoft wanted a part of this too. So Microsoft went head to head with Netscape's browser and released Internet Explorer and made it the standard browser with their operating system and eventually destroyed Netscape's market share. Microsoft was too busy fighting Netscape that they didn't realize where the future true value of the web was, which was actually being able to find websites. There were many companies trying to find all different varieties of offering ways to find what you might be looking for on the web in directories and search engines with different kinds of algorithms. But the value was in the advertising and pushing other services. If a visitor used a search engine, then they're immediately leaving the site to go to the site they were seeking. Why would you want to lose your visitors? So these sites like AltaVista were cluttered to keep you on there as long as possible and get as many page views as possible. Then Google came about with a simple search bar and very little else on the site. It also used a new algorithm called PageRank, which was mainly about the popularity of a website from other sites linking to it. Eventually, Google also monetized people leaving their site with pay-per-click advertising. But it was search that was where the real value of the internet was that Microsoft missed. And Google eventually brought out their own browser, Chrome, which took away from Microsoft's market share, along with their own suite of word processors, spreadsheets, and email. Google was competing back at Microsoft, but distracted that they didn't see Apple. Apple was hanging by a thread at one stage before Steve Jobs returned and tidied up the company and eventually launched the revolutionizing music player, the iPod, which of course eventually evolved into the iPhone. Phones needed operating systems. Google got in as quick as they could with Android. And again, Microsoft missed the boat too late on the operating system for phones, a product that is their bread and butter for PCs a massive oversight. Then the industry evolves more and we have new concepts of software where they become a service rather than a product. Suddenly Microsoft can charge annually and everyone always has the latest version and consumers are willing to pay. There was also the whole cloud movement, a way of having all your files everywhere you go. Google had products like Google Drive and Microsoft did well with Azure. However, there was also Amazon who managed to do really well from AWS. Amazon hadn't been sitting idly all this time either. They'd even launched their own phone with its own operating system, a total failure, but you don't always know until you try. Cloud-based computing was a new era and all these tech companies jumped on, Apple too, with their iCloud. Of course, some of their cloud businesses did much better than others, but all of them were in the tech space to at least be able to attempt some version of service for their consumers. Other new technologies came out as well, like streaming, Netflix and Spotify. Apple jumped onto that bandwagon with Apple Music and Apple TV. Google and Amazon too. Tech companies get offered these continual opportunities of new industries and can do their version of them. As long as they're able to somehow get their current brand to match and leverage their existing technology. Microsoft did actually try to compete with Google, spending billions on their own search engine called Bing. Of course, they also attempted to compete with the iPod, with their unsuccessful M3P player, Zoom. But somehow, there are people out there still actually using Bing. And Microsoft also bought Nokia and now have a small market share with the mobile operating system industry too. 
Bing probably is quite profitable as search is just such a huge cash cow. Just ask Larry Page. It is an established brand now and has its place, but it's not going anywhere, except until we have a new wave of technology. Then Microsoft may be able to leverage it into evolving into the next revolution. But this was only possible if it existed and remained in the market. Of course, we are here now with AI. Microsoft is integrating ChatGPT into Bing and going to leverage that technology to finally compete with Google. Microsoft got on top of this one in time. They aren't entirely sure how to monetize it best yet, just like Google didn't know how to initially either, but eventually they will likely find a way. Google aren't taking this lightly, of course, and have their own in-house version called Bard, but it's possible Microsoft have a fighting chance now to increase their market share again. But this was mainly possible because they planted that seed long ago called Bing. Equally, Apple's Siri or Amazon's Alexa seems obvious brands to explore the AI capabilities, but both are relatively disappointing compared to ChatGPT. Wow, that must have been the longest time I've gone without mentioning Tesla. Right, so how does this relate to Tesla? Tesla started as a prevent climate change company and went into energy and vehicles. The solar panel side of the business has been doing very little, and to be honest, I don't think Tesla are going to ramp that up. I think solar panels are likely going to be left to the Chinese and Koreans. It's too small an industry for Tesla relative to the rest of the potential, along with all the hassle involved in installation. It's not a tidy business. Instead, as far as energy is concerned, Tesla are finally branching out more with megapacks and have worked out how to get the costs down significantly so it can compete with Pika plants. Powerwall is more just a convenience product, but if they can switch over to LFP sales and get the price down to about half, then it could be a great product for many more homeowners. Tesla were doing well with the Model 3, but the batteries were very capital intensive and it was hard to ramp up. Giga Nevada was going to be the largest building in the world when complete because it takes that much space to make that many 2170 cells. But along the way, LFP cells suddenly started ramping and had many advantages that made them suited to electric vehicles. Tesla was in the right place for this new technology and could thus benefit from it in a major way. The next thing Tesla did was make a new Model 3 factory in Shanghai, where the cells are made. Then, soon after that, a Model Y factory for the same reason. And thus, Tesla could triple production without having to build another massive Giga Nevada, which was not going to be a long-term feasible solution. Tesla also decided to build cells in-house, the 4680 cells, just like Microsoft developed Bing. The 4680s are not yet a success, but Tesla have established themselves as a cell manufacturer and can later benefit from any new technologies that may arise, which in this industry is highly probable. Sure, Tesla have clearly outlined their missions, but the plan never goes straight forward. It's never a direct path, but more a zigzag, and sometimes you go backwards before you get further ahead. For example, for all we really know, FSD may not be ready by 2030 or so. It could take that long. Yes, it's absolutely incredible and does amazing things, but there's a big jump until it can do, say, 1,000 consecutive trips without any interventions. Meanwhile, there are other advances or waves of technology that may come up, like robotics. Tesla may end up utilizing the FSD technology in robots before robo-taxis. Tesla is an asymmetric investment company. They put their chips down on various bets, and some pay off big, some do not. However, unlike gambling, Tesla don't lose their chips if they don't pay off instantly. They can stay there until a certain technology changes the game and suddenly it becomes a winning bet. Again, like Microsoft with Bing. No one can predict the future. No one knows what technologies will come up or how they will evolve or what black swan events might happen. Investing is all about trying to spread enough bets so that you hit something big and one of these futures actually come into fruition. Like how I thought electric vehicles would be big or how I thought Bitcoin was an amazing form of scarcity. Over time, eventually something happens and these investments gain massive leverage. Do you think 10 or 20 years ago, Microsoft had a business plan in order to turn products into a services pricing, start cloud computing, make an AI search tool? No, because they didn't know the future and what was lying ahead. Just like we don't know now, but we know Tesla has spread itself into a lot of areas and is becoming the technology company of energy and transport, two very big industries. Tesla may not go in the direction we think to get where they want, but the world will move in a way that Tesla can move with that tide, and it will grow through one way or another. We don't know what the future holds, but it sure feels like everything Tesla is doing is in the right direction.
Hi there. I'm using Verbalate AI video translation and lip sync software. It's pretty amazing. Watch this. I can translate my videos into other languages. For example, I am now speaking Hindi. Namaste. I am talking about Hindi first time, but the verbalate is so easy to make it. Or oh, how about Spanish? Hola, vaya, increíble. También puedo hablar español. Sign up at verbalate.ai today to gain early access to trial the product for creators and strategic partners and gain the ability to translate and lip sync videos in all major languages. You can view the info in the description below.